everybody doing today? Can you guys hear me okay? I don't know, well, well, I'm thinking about um, potentially doing a new mask. Because of COVID's uh, uh, oh, still not over, so why not make a new mask? We'll see. Of course, I'm just sketching right now. You know, kind of getting more done. Especially since it's been a while. I'm just feeling it. So I think it's been a long time. I'm just kind of sketching some stuff. What's everybody doing out there? Happy New Year. Everybody doing all right? Stay safe and uh, got some new goals and new things we're gonna do this year. What about now? Is that sound uh, any better? Or is that still pretty low? Could I uh, put the gain up on my mic? Um, I had it pretty close to my mouth, but you know, sometimes things change. I did have a new, whole new setup. So that could potentially be something that's not working. But how's the sound now? Is this much better? save this and then we can uh, we can either choose to come back to it or not <laughs> uh, yeah it's still low huh okay um, 
Yeah, that's weird. It should be pretty high. It's as high as it can go on my uh, adjustments. Um, maybe I need to turn the gain on or something. Let's see. What about now? Is this better? <coughs> it, is, it could be that the music is a little too loud. But let's, uh, yeah, let's get started. So let me show you guys a project that I was thinking. I started last night. I started sketching something last night. I was thinking of making some kind of a zombie looking mask, you know, something a little more creepy, especially since you want more people to stay away from you. Uh, so I started kind of sketching this. But one of the, I guess, you know, just a sketch. So maybe we'll, we'll continue this. I'm sketching it in like a couple pieces, like the interior skull. And then, um, kind of the skin I'll show you guys some of my inspiration just kind of looking at some of this stuff you know kind of walking dead type of stuff trying to see how I can make this work so yeah this is kind of I think this is the direction we're kind of gonna go for this just kind of playing around with it I did want to make a mech mask too but um, I think we'll we'll start with this first and then get this printed out one thing I noticed right before I um, I guess went to sleep last night. I said everything's a little big, so I need to kind of um, shrink everything down just a tiny bit. It just scans on myself. I have this, this dummy as well to kind of check for proportions. These are all just the pieces. I had a skull in here that I from the ZBrush stuff, but it didn't quite work out, so I decided to just sketch away. Okay, so now that we have these pieces, uh, let's go back to my head. We can see that we need to kind of shrink some stuff down a bit, even if you look at where my nose position is at. Right, it's like maybe a little too much. I do need room for my mask, my actual covering mask, but uh, we'll see. Still very low, huh? Let me see, let me check those values. Okay, seems, seems better. I don't really know why it's so... What about now? We'll just bring it even closer. Literally right on my face. Uh, but yeah, I figured we start with a new mask for this new year. So let's, uh, let's see what we can do about that. First, let's make sure this is at the center. Shrink it down a bit. I think that would be a nicer fit. It could be, you know, just a little big, but not a, not crazy huge. So let's continue with that. So this mesh that you see poking is kind of my beard, and my uh, my cheek. So I kind of need to adjust it a little more. But I guess what I had earlier was a little too much. So let's tweak that now. So what kind of projects would you guys like to see on stream uh, for this year? Is there anything uh, particular you guys would like to to see what I do or how I do it? Oh, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, I want it to be pretty creepy. So, and I also want to mold it and cast it. So that's why I will lose some of the teeth, but I'm kind of trying to uh, right now everything symmetrical. So we're gonna break symmetry eventually. I just need to. Uh, do a little more tweaks, you know? Before we we split the teeth and all everything else, you know? Or maybe not split them, but... Um, and the nice thing is if it's too small, then we could always print it bigger, right? <laughs> but yeah, I'm trying to keep, make sure this... Maybe I should color this a little darker color. So I can actually see when I'm when I'm going through it. Uh, let's see, switch this. Let's fill that. Switch over back. Okay, so that helps. 
So now I know that the darker one is my skin, so I need to make sure that I push it out. Oh, look at that, it didn't, we didn't poly paint it at all. Oh, it's a little, that's what it was. Yeah, you always sometimes have this. This is pretty rare. You see where I can't feel the object. It's not a big deal. I'm sure that happens to many of us. So all I do is just kind of make my brush really huge and just paint. And so now we can make our other color a little lighter. All the way light. Now we can see that it's actually dark. So I guess it just looked like it was masked. Some further tweaking with this stuff. See it being asymmetrical. Oh, let's uh, turn that on. There we go. Just wondering what was happening there. Huh, it is, it is raised all the way. That's the weird part. Let me see if I can do anything about it real quick. Maybe I need to put some uh, something else on. Yes, yeah, it's, it's weird. It's it only goes up to. Uh, let me see. Maybe I switched something by accident on here. Give me one second. What about now? Okay, there we go. I I, I put the gain up. I was moving the wrong. What about now? It's, yes, much better. Is this better, guys? Just want to make sure. So I can't really tell. To me, the, the bars look still similar. So I just want to make sure that the volume is, sounds okay. Okay, awesome. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I don't know, must, something must have happened when I moved my desk around. And uh, maybe that knob got moved. All right, well, let's continue. Uh, t -t 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 so I want to make sure it doesn't get too close to my ears. I need to move some of this stuff back. So you see, I already started with the asymmetry, kind of making one lip a lot more covered than the other. Uh, well, I wasn't going to plan on retopping, but if I was going to retopple this, yeah, I would take it to my and just use the polygon tools and just kind of snap to it, you know. Yeah, we are where we topple each each teeth, especially if there was gonna be something for like a movie or or something like that. I we topple each each tooth. And right, even right now, they're just sketched out, so I still need to refine the shapes on them, you know, to make them like from different angles, make sure they're they're doing the right thing. And I'm also exaggerating them a bit so that they read better. Because if you had this mask on, like they read like really rotten teeth, so that's kind of what I'm going for. But yeah, if you're doing this from production, definitely I will do each tooth separately and make sure they're labeled and um, they have the right numbers and all that stuff, like the the right assignments. This is just a little more on the exaggerated side, so it's a little, a little different. You know, I was was thinking about doing a kind of a nose. It's more like a. I guess you would call it uh, not like a nose, but more like the just like a skeleton nose. But we'll see. Yeah, that, that's fine. It, it doesn't have to be. I, I do with Maya ZBrush all the time, so it's all good. But yeah, definitely separate separate teeth, separate teeth, and all the muscles. Yeah, I will probably make all the muscles separately too. So here I'm just thinking what kind of rotten teeth does he have, you know, like what kind of rotten skin has he, maybe he chewed on so many people that now it's kind of like his skin is just kind of completely, I guess, dead, you know. <laughs> so maybe we'll, we'll try, I think we will try the, we will try the nose. I'll probably duplicate this too and then try the nose and see what that looks like.
Maybe one of his nostrils got all chewed up or something, right? How's this looking now fitted now that we shrunk it down a little bit? Let's see. Yeah, it's much better fitting. It's not so big. I think maybe we could bring the overall teeth up a little bit because if you look at where my chin is at, they're kind of like a little bit lower than my chin. But yeah, um, we'll get to it. Let's see. Maybe we can make those the overall teeth just smaller. There we go. I think that might help. They could still be pushed forward. It's like just a matter of like how they read. Obviously, also, also these are my eyeballs. You know, if you have a real skull, which I have, I have a skull sample here. Uh, your teeth wouldn't uh, be going all the way to the to like outside of your eyeball lining up. It'll be more like at the center. Of the center of the of the of the high hole so just a matter of tweaking some of that stuff you know but also i have a big beard so it has to kind of maybe the head huh what, what is that i don't know what that is let me look that up real quick yeah, if you guys have suggestions of cool masks that have um oh i see i see yeah yeah I guess, it, yeah, it kind of, right? If I were to make them all both the same. So it looks like this part is sticking out. That's my beard. See, that's part of my face. So that's where I have to be careful not to just make it too narrow for my face. I just push out a little bit and it's also asymmetrical so or my face is asymmetrical so some of this stuff could be tweaked just a bit for my face or generic face in that overall Let's see yeah actually that that was thinking about that but I have seen a lot of Mortal Kombat mask so I thought maybe it was already overdone, but if you guys think it's cool, maybe I'll make one, you know? Because why not, right? We, I love Mortal Kombat, so why not make a cool Mortal Kombat face? So let's play around with that nose. Let's, um, first, let's save it before we continue, because things tend to crash. Save every, at least every 20 minutes. <laughs> 15 20 minutes all right so let's duplicate this guy which is our our main nose so let's see if we can do something with um with the nose and just completely make it more into like a skeleton nose and see how that works out might work out might not but we'll see also how much my nose is actually sticking out So for this, we're gonna we're gonna soft now. This since we have no cartilage, and there's no typically no nose. So that's where my real nose is at. So we need to make sure it sticks out at least that much. And maybe this is a part where it kind of comes in right, like a skull. Yeah, I, I've been uh, I've been thinking about it. I have taught some people how to do some of this stuff, but I'm not sure if it, if it's something that everybody wanted to know. So I kind of um, don't know. I post some stuff on my Instagram, so maybe check that stuff out there. But I have been um, asked to to teach some people about this. 
like how to mold your own mask because that's what I've been kind of doing. Uh, let me show you. Um, let me post my Instagram on here so that you guys can follow me if you guys wish to, or if not, it's all good. No, I, I, I mostly, uh, pr I print in filament, I print in uh, resin, I print, I have like a five, like four or five printers. So I print in different types of printers and then I cast and mold the stuff. Cause you know, you just make the master. You don't have to always, well, speaking of prints, here's one of the prints that I've been uh, kind of working on of uh, this. I, you guys have seen this alien before in one of my streams, uh, I was detailing it out. So I decided to do a test print with this new uh, resin that I was uh, that I was able to get from uh, from Matter Hackers, my my friends at Matter Hackers sent me some resin to play around with, so I'm kind of play, playing around with that in the in the Alago Saturn. So far, it's been pretty good. It's been all the prints have been successful, which is awesome. So so let's see, let's uh, let's see what can we do with this. So we have this cavity, so let's see what we can do with this cavity. So we're kind of exaggerating some of the main things that we, you would have in a skull. Because obviously this has to fit over my skull. So it has to be kind of, um, you know. Why only in Twitch? Uh, you could check out, um, it's also streaming on YouTube and Facebook. So you guys could check that out as well. If, if you don't like have Twitch. Uh, some people don't like Twitch, or some people do. So, uh, you know, it's whatever you guys want. Just looking at the skull here, kind of. I gotta make that bony ridge, you know. And since I'm going to be putting this over my mask, that's probably a perfect hole for, for me to be able to breathe in here. Maybe just fake some of this, um, the cavity, right? Or paint it another color. See, so it kind of makes sense, like there's part of the lip, so that's a continuation of the skull. I do some asymmetry on that as well so that it feels um music's pretty good expert man official hey how's it going man thanks for welcome to the stream i don't know what do you guys think which one do you guys like better let's uh, let's switch these off let's uh, go back and forth Switch the wrong one off. Nose or no nose? I want to say no nose. Because then that kind of takes it away from the being, you know. Oh, uh, Twitch. Oh, hey, man. No nose, right? Yeah, all right. Good thing I good thing I blocked that out. All right, cool. Let's go with the no nose. I, I agree. Sometimes you just gotta go with no nose. 
and this is one of those locations. So let's see what we can do. I appreciate the feedback, guys. This is this is cool. It's like interactive, um, interactive design. Starting to do some wrinkles. So here's where we have to go asymmetrical now because some of these wrinkles don't exist on my on the other side since this is asymmetrical. I we could refine some of these lips too. Kinda everything's rotting away, so let's look at some of that zombie reference real quick. Yeah, it seems a lot like these zombies have um here's another zombie reference. Kind of just um deformed skin. See this one's kind of maybe more kind of what I should be doing. Let's ch check out this other one. There's another one here. So maybe I need to add a little more separation on the between the teeth. But um maybe some bottom lip. I think some bottom lip would help. Oh. Well. Whatever's left of his bottom lip, he doesn't really have one. It's okay, maybe we could give him one. He's been chewing on people's faces a little too much. Another thing we can do is also... Also just hide my face. That might help. Then we concentrate more on the design, you know, maybe he has some teeth that are bad. We'll also probably start making his teeth all busted up and maybe some broken ones. <laughs> and these are just sketches, man. These are just all uh, quick and dirty teeth that I did last night, you know. But I guess this is where we could start breaking asymmetry too. Why not? Let's uh, let's get on that. Let's see. Start grabbing some of these guys and start twisting them around so they don't feel perfectly symmetrical. some overlap as well so I'm trying to I'm trying to not to make them thin because I'm gonna if I were to cast some of this stuff I don't want it to be um, so thin there but the nice thing is that I could cut holes in here too if I needed more breathing there so that's maybe I'll leave some gaps in between so that I can uh, add more breathing holes, you know? Most of the time I like doing all this stuff separate, but in this case, since I'm gonna print it, it's, it's a different process, so it's also a different way of, I kind of, manhandling these teeth, you know? I don't know what happened to this music. Let me uh, change some. Let me change the music real quick. This one could be one of those ones where it has a gap. I don't think this music got any better. 
Let's see, any advice in the... Uh, Yes, that happens to me a lot, actually. Um, you can see from my streams, I, I sometimes step away from some things. Like, I'll, I'll do a stream, spend a few hours, and then step away from the project. Um, but, you know, uh, I guess I will say maybe have two or three projects you start on. So, like, maybe you, like, let's say we're doing this mass, right? We'll do this mass, spend a, a day or a couple hours, and then if you get bored, switch to the next project. And when you come back to this like a day later maybe um it would help for you to kind of see it with fresh eyes and see whether it's more worth moving on or just stepping away from it sometimes some stuff is worth stepping away and not wasting any more time sometimes you see the potential for some of this so i would say just maybe have two or three projects that you're kind of working at, at the same time i think that would probably help you that happens to me a lot, so I tend to have a lot of projects that I'm working on at the same time. Because there's times when I don't feel like working on one. Like, there's some projects that I'm working on that are, like, kind of like this stuff. And those things take longer to kind of get done. So I would uh, suggest, like, sometimes you need a week or two off from those things. So that, you know, it doesn't feel like you're just uninspired. That happens to me a lot, too. So it's not a, not a big deal, man. That happens all the time. Yes, I, I think I'm going to remove one or two teeth, like, uh, I'm just trying to figure out which ones, you know, like maybe, maybe he's missing this bottom one. Or it's broken, you know, like it's, it just got shattered. Maybe that, maybe that's what happened to it. So maybe let's, uh, yeah, like that part just disappeared. So if you guys are wondering what I'm using, I'm using this weighted smooth so that it can help me smooth stuff that's like really dense really quick as opposed to the regular smooth where it would take me a whole bunch of tries to get rid of it. No, I haven't finished that Krampus. I, I was supposed to do my break, but uh, I took three weeks off of work and I just kind of did nothing. <laughs> kind of needed just to recharge. Um, I was thinking of bringing it back. I just didn't know if people really want to see that, you know. But I'm pretty close to wrapping that guy up. Like, I managed to block the body and everything else. I just need to kind of maybe spend another stream on it. And then it should probably be good to, to go. But we'll see. See, so maybe this guy got chipped. And then we'll set this back. And then if we do, uh, when we paint it, we'll just paint it, paint it black. And then it'll look like it's part of the rotty face. Yeah, that Krampus demon was interesting. It, it was a fun little kind of project. Um, it was a different style for my, for myself too, kind of doing that that type of work. So we're just faking this stuff to see also. these guys a little bit of a highlight so that you know which direction they're kind of pointing so we got one tooth that's gone there um, let's see maybe we need to point inside too and then we'll probably remove one other one all the way oh thanks man appreciate it should be one of these back ones, maybe. Let's see. One of these front ones. Thinking one of the top now. Oh, maybe it, maybe it gets shoved in. Maybe this guy. Maybe like somebody punched him in the face and like his teeth got uh, shoved back into his face. <laughs> can he can't have perfect teeth, right? He's a zombie. He's eating rocks, brains, skulls, whatever, you know. Yeah, that gives him more of a 
I guess this... Uh, let's fill that in. I don't like the way that looks. Still could be broken, it's just not hollow, I guess. There we go. That reads much better, right? It looks like it's broken. Well, let's, twi let's twist some of these guys up a little more. Here we go more extreme on this guy. Did you guys get any 3D printers? Anybody working on anything 3D printer related? Also start making them thinner so that you could tell they're attached to the skull. Because they do tend to get thinner when they when they go deeper into the skull. Insert it, I guess. So we can just trim them down a bit. Oh, how do you like it? I heard I heard it's a good printer. If I didn't get the Saturn, that's the one I probably would have gotten. Yeah, one of my friends got one of those. Um, he's, he likes it pretty. He likes it a lot. Yeah, so we're now we're still pro blocking out pro uh, primary form, so that's why I'm not going crazy with the detail on any of this stuff. Oh, it's cool, man. It's great. Is it pretty quiet as well? Yeah, the the printing is pretty interesting, right? Um, one one thing that I do, I don't know, it might help you, is I create, uh, I use Maya, so I create um, like a one inch cube for all the scaling stuff, and then from there I use that as my my scale. And then you know duplicate it a few times you want to make something three inches five inches or whatever it may be that that helps me a lot to kind of just use that as a ruler put it next to it and you know it's all good yeah that's what i like about these new printers because compared to my form my form 2 like that that's that uh, saturn is like so quiet like i don't even know if it's running sometimes besides the lights being on Yeah, I, pr I printed this on the, on the Saturn. Um, this guy came out pretty clean. It's pretty big too, compared. You know, it's almost the size of my hand, or a little bigger actually, if you've noticed. So that's that's very nice. I think on the, I wouldn't be able to do that on the form. I'm gonna I'm gonna prime that guy. Hopefully in the next uh, probably this weekend. This long weekend. So let's see. Let's give that this guy a little bit more. Let's give this guy some lips. How about that? Let's, let's do it a different way. We'll just make this symmetrical so that it's... Um, if we need to delete the other side, we can.
Then we can just dynamesh this together at, at the end. I use a variety of paint. I use um, FW inks are my favorite, but they tend to be very subtle. So I also use um, this Tim Gore line. Um, I forgot what it's called. Um, let me find it for you. Uh, bloodline that's what it is uh, bloodline paint and uh it's pretty it's pretty good i really like it too it's but it's more it's very saturated like very dark for it'll probably be perfect for this project i use those as well and then also just uh, regular regular acrylic stuff to kind of do the basing but uh, i also do my priming with uh tamiya primer Yeah, everything has to be hollow. I always think about making everything hollow unless you need it to be very strong or it's very small, then you probably shouldn't hollow it. Uh, but I always hollow everything because it'll save you a lot of money on resin too. Even though resin is way cheaper now than what it used to be, um, I would highly recommend that you continue to um, to kind of just, you know, just use some of that. Let's see. All right, so this is pretty good. We might add a little bit of a lip in the bottom too because I feel like we, we kind of need it. It would be nice. So we could probably use uh, this guy and just uh, just flip him. <laughs> Since we already did all that work, we just have to readjust. Maybe his lip could be sagging to one side or the other, but uh, let's just block it out and then see how, how what that adds to this. Sometimes it adds something, sometimes it doesn't. But it's uh I I've been using two types of resin so far. I've been getting them from Amazon and from Matter Hackers. So I've been using the um, Soraya Tech um, Fast, and I've been getting that from Amazon. Except in December they had some issues with with I guess so many people were ordering and, and shipping. So that took a little longer, but um, I've been using that, and I've been using um, the Matter Hackers uh, new resin too. I would highly recommend the Matter Hackers one because it doesn't smell, where the Soraya Tech uh, has a bit of a of a smell. So I would say let me let me let me send you guys a link to the Matter Hackers one that I've been using. Uh, let's see. So if we go to Matter Hackers. And if you search for resin, you guys should be able to check it out there. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm trying to make this creepy, so hopefully it's coming across. So it looks like a little bit of the bottom lip helps. And we'll, we'll make it asymmetrical as well. Just want to kind of... Looking at some of the Walking Dead stuff, um, like some of that reference, they always have like a bottom lip, and I like how the top lip comes over it, but the inside, the other one tucks in. No matter how much, no matter how much are you seeing of the bottom, like it's always kind of tucking in. This makes I need to make my chin also maybe lower and less pronounced. Give this lip a little more room. And also maybe define it a bit a little bit as a lip too because it's starting to get a little wobbly. We'll turn it down because he's obviously not hydrating. Let's see. Um, 
I would say the CR10 is probably your best bet because it's cheap or see or any of those uh, Creality ones they're like in the hundred dollar range or even if you wanted to do resin there's the Allego Mars Allego Mars seems to be pretty uh, pretty good that's one I was thinking of getting right before the Saturn came out but um they're all becoming pretty affordable and the resin has become way inexpensive so that's that's also nice So let's blend in these forms onto um, onto our previous skin, so that we can uh, use this as a. This is what I was talking about. This overlap here. I know it's such a small thing, but I think it makes a big difference. So what we could do now is uh, let's see, grab uh, that guy, the latest. And we have these two guys, right? So let's merge down. So now that we, we dynamesh them, we're going to go a little higher because obviously 48 is too low. There we go. So now that we have those all in there and they're, they have the right volumes, now we can start um, press X to continue blending these guys and then we do the asymmetry and just smoothing, smoothing the transition in. And now we can break the symmetry again and kind of make one more lopsided than the other. Oh, nice! Uh, Twelve years old. Wow. That's uh, that's pretty awesome, man. Okay, so we're breaking symmetry. We're gonna bring uh, one of these guys higher. And then we're gonna probably. these guys lower just to add some asymmetry you know and a little bit more visual interest and also the same thing kind of because they are on top of the lips or on top of the teeth not on Then we can start adding some, some rotten texture or some rotten teeth. Um, well first, let's make his. Now that we have this, let's make this a little, a little bit more of a chin, because we kind of lost it. Just a bit, you know. Also, we can start seeing how much is pushing off my face because if it's pushing way too much, we need to go back and, and kind of relax it back. Uh, still good. We could we could do a little bit of tweaking, maybe push a little back on both. Not a big deal. See, maybe that was a little too far back because that's my actual. Nice thing about history, you can always go back and just tweak it. You know, of course my beard con conforms, so it's not a big deal if I just push it a little back. Well, I was, I've been using the clear, uh, the clear stuff, but I would say I'm going to start going with the gray. Because I, I don't really have a use for all the clear. Uh, you know, to be honest, I always repaint it on top and, and cast the molding. But it was nice to experiment with it, maybe for some things, like if I wanted to paint like a crystal or some kind of a uh, gem, it would be cool, or something transparent. But I would just go with either the white, the gray, or the black, but to be honest, probably either the white or the gray. Cool. 
Cool. So that's fitting back on, so we're good. Let's continue to block this stuff out. All right. Let's see. Hey, from Brazil. How's it going? Let's save. Let's save, guys. You guys uh, enjoying the stream so far? Everything good? All right, let's add some lip detail, and then we can start breaking the skin apart. Well, first, we're gonna start breaking symmetry. We're just kind of just adding some general breakup, you know. Then we'll add some finer stuff, and then kind of. We'll start adding some cavities of destruction and that type of stuff, you know? Start breaking some of this stuff up too. That zombie reference. Let's see. Yeah, so we're gonna start adding some of this rotted stuff eventually on top too. So I'm just kind of blocking in with still human remain remainder stuff. This nose maybe needs to be a little higher, but we'll see. Still looking pretty good overall. to this music sorry guys just gotta change music a bit all right so now we have enough sketching going on here let's see we got some more skin details rotted skin First, actually, we need to do this cavity trick. Peaks and valleys. Oh, doesn't like that. There we go. That's much better. So now that we blur that, we can inflate some stuff. So we do this trick to kind of make some of this stuff feel like skin is actually overlapping as opposed to just laying a piece of clay out. Mm. 
No, because some skin does have more. A little more round. See, and then we blend it. Start getting some more of that crackly skin. Then we can also smooth it out. Makes it feel more rotten. Now we can start fight uh, laying out some of these more. Cracked lips and stuff, you know? This is just the major stuff. We'll add some of the, the real details right now in, in a few minutes. This is just lighter stuff to kind of break the bigger shapes up of the dead skin. Just to give it a little direction. What do you guys think so far? Pretty cool or? So let's save there and then move on to adding some more details. So we're probably gonna add some holes to the lips, break that bottom lip up a little bit so it doesn't feel so perfect, you know? And there's probably an easy way to do this, like, um, let's see, we could probably mask a few things and then push them in and then refine those, so. There we go. You know, like maybe those pieces got rotten out. Oh, thanks, man. And maybe this giant chunk of, of me got taken out. Now we can refine that by cutting this stuff here. And it probably wouldn't be perfectly cut like I did, but that's the major cut. And then you have this nasty stuff that's kind of, you know, where it ripped, with the skin ripped apart. It's just chunks just kind of hanging out. You know, you can see the lip thickness here. So this is the same thing to the top, you know. <laughs> yes, such a handsome boy. I totally agree. So maybe whatever that will happen on here on this side. Maybe we just do it on the same side so it feels symmetrical or like
start seeing some of that stuff, you know, some of the stuff we made underneath. That's the reason I kept it two objects so that we can do this. If not, it would be pretty hard to try to do any of this stuff. And of course, we're, we, since these parts are dead, they, they also get thinner, so we have to make sure, make sure we push them in. You know, and then we can start playing around with some rotted skin. Well, we can start playing with some regular skin. So let's maybe add a little more resolution to this. Before we do that, that, we, that comes across nicely. So we're adding like almost double the resolution of the current thing. Oh, look at that. That happens. So this is where we need to go in here and maybe clean some stuff up. Uh, what's my favorite zombie movie? Oh, that's a hard one. There's so many different parts of different zombie movies that I like, you know? Um, 28 Days Later is pretty good. Um... World War Z has some cool parts, you know. But recently, I see I seen a Korean zombie movie that was really good. Oh, the is it Korean or? Yeah, I think it's Korean. Uh, Train to Bulan or something like that. That was one of my favorite ones. One of my most recent favorite ones. And I think there's another one called The Gift. Uh, let me check that one. Let me see if that's the right one. There's one with a little girl that's kind of a zombie. But I stayed away from zombies for such a long time just because uh, everybody was doing... Yeah, the, the girl with the gift. That's that's the one. The girl with all the gifts. That's the one. That, that one's a pretty good one. I would highly recommend that one. So sometimes if you get that kind of explosion uh, stuff happening, you do it again. And sometimes it's just something that's overlapping too many times or, or acting weird. So we'll see what it is. See, in this case, it still doesn't like it. Or sometimes you need to go up in resolution. There we go. So we need to go up in resolution a little slower. There we go. So that, that happens. Nothing to be uh, alarmed about. Um, oh, skin. That's what we're doing. Now that we added more resolution, so we can uh, use our standard. I uh, say spray. Let's change this to one of these guys. Uh, this guy's pretty good. Let's see. Oh, forgot. We're trying to make it look all leathery and old and that type of stuff. Yeah, you should definitely check that one out tonight, man. That, that's a really good one if you like zombie stuff. I used to be a big fan of the Walking Dead series. And then I kind of fell off once... Um, kind of, I guess, Negan showed up. Like, a lot of that stuff felt... I don't know. It didn't feel that good to me. So here I'm just kind of going with the direction. Some of this stuff would get blurred and erased eventually. So some stuff I'm making pretty big, but see how it kind of makes it look nice and leathery. If you kind of go with the direction of your of your of your uh, guides, kind of helps. So a video card, uh, well, Zebras doesn't really use a video card to do all its processing. It's, it uses more CPU, but I will say any of the NVIDIA cards are, are great, yeah, you know, or whatever your preference is. But uh, the latest the latest ones are, are pretty awesome. So I will say any of those will work. It uh, depends on what, what other kind of work do you do. Then we're also in trauma on this too, so that there's like holes and, and nasty stuff all over the place. I 
one thing that I started using recently too uh, that I would say would be pretty cool to use is the contrast brush that's a pretty good tool as well especially for 3d printing stuff because um, sometimes it looks great when it's printed when, when it's on your screen but then when you print it it's really soft so that's a good way to kind of enhance some of that Let's see so there's those are the major I guess the major details that we're adding here right like the leathery skin but then we could add also bigger ones with less less intensity to kind of add a more enhancement of some more we have to be careful with these because if you do them too too much then it starts to look This kind of helps to give you a little more break of all the stuff that we did earlier. Hey, hola, Barcelona, huh? Nice. Thanks for joining. All it takes is time, you know. I'm not. Prof I don't. Feel, I still don't feel proficient at it. I just, I just do it a lot, and then eventually you just get better at it, you know. I think that's the main thing to to kind of keep in mind. see what can we do now we're gonna add some more cuts and then we're gonna add some uh i guess some gross gross stuff on it well let's work on some t texture too because there's no texture on this really this is more of a also you can you technically use the same well i guess we can go with this one that's more spotted right because it's more bone but mostly for the bone not for the teeth teeth should have a different different texture more like with direction it's more for like the overall just bone texture. Or skull texture, I guess. The teeth, the teeth should have more of a directional. But let's do a little more cleanup on these teeth before we do any details. So one, one detail that I'm thinking about is just kind of inflating some of these guys so they fill in some of these gaps as we're going to print it right i want to reduce as many gaps or overlaps as possible but the holes are fine because we're probably we could we could print it this way and then drill the holes Oh, thanks, man. Appreciate appreciate the kind words from you guys. It uh, I'm here to inspire. Hopefully, that's what I'm achieving and helping you guys. You know, see how easy this is, so you guys can do it too. Especially during this pandemic, it's uh, you know, why not make something that you can wear when you have to, when you actually have to go outside if if you have to. Something to keep people away from you. So let's go with a little bit of direction on those teeth. Well, let's see if we can do any polishing uh, first. So maybe let's mask them out. Yeah, all this stuff just comes with practice, guys. The more you guys do mistakes, the faster you guys will get better. And I, I think that's something that I recommend to a lot of my students and a lot of people that I, that I talk to that are starting out. It's like make the mistakes as fast as you can so that you can get to the good stuff. The more you're scared of not doing making mistakes is the the more you're going to take longer to get better at things you know i make plenty of mistakes even after doing this for 20 years but it's okay because you know that you just fix it you're just gonna have to fix it move on that's it you know hey what's up man thanks thanks for joining from india that's awesome oh thanks man i appreciate it so let's see, let's do a little polishing on this. So yeah, sure, we can do H polish, but um, we want to kind of just do a pass of this stuff, right? So let's see, polish by feature, let's see. Yeah, that helps a little bit. 
just to get the noise out of it and make it more planar. And then we could always go in here and give them a little more direction so they don't feel like fleshy because they're not fleshy, right? See, I think we have plenty of time to actually wrap this guy up. Usually, most of the time it takes about two streams because you know we're just thinking about ideas. But we might actually be able to get this guy done and print it over the week, and then have it ready for next stream. Have it move on and maybe do some uh, some airbrushing on this guy. It'd be cool. Yeah, it's all about mistakes, man. Making those mistakes as quickly as you can. That's that's my main uh, thing to tell you guys. All right, so we need some direction, right? So we're gonna continue with that spray brush, but we're gonna, um, let's see, can we, I don't wanna do this one. Let's see. There we go. I know it's so subtle, but you know, we get these these lines on our teeth, like they're kinda like, um, I guess from not taking care of them sometimes, you know, they're not very strong, but sometimes if you look at the enamel, you can kind of see it. So that's kind of what I'm trying to give this guy, especially since he's been grinding on people's brains. He probably has some lines of uh, direction. Then we'll also chip some of his teeth and give him a little more harder edge. See, so they, from a distance, it starts to read. Sometimes some of the stuff close up doesn't look great, but when you look at a distance it, it kind of just breaks the highlight so he doesn't have perfect pearly white teeth you know let's try something else That was one that had three of those guys. It's fine. Could we just could we also make a few lines with these guys? I think the main thing is not to go overboard. Sometimes I know like it's fun. So like here we need to break this up. So there still feels like a tooth. And we'll add, some, we'll add some detail to some of that stuff inside too in case you decide to keep it or we decide to keep it. If we paint it black, it just kind of doesn't look like a flat shiny part. It looks kind of gross, like there's something inside. So that's probably what we'll do next. Nothing crazy, just a little bit of noise. But usually if this guy was just a regular human, I would probably spend more time cleaning between the teeth. But because he's a zombie, he probably has leftover brains in there and trash and, you know, I don't know what else he's been eating. Raccoons. So we could just have probably add a layer of noise. Just some random stuff in there. So what's inspiring you guys these days? What uh, you guys have uh, anything you guys have recently been inspired by? I think it's important to talk about that, since sometimes I think inspiration um, doesn't always drive what you have to do. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Um, so sometimes you just have to still work whether you're inspired or not. So sometimes inspiration is not the best, but inspiration helps, I think. So 
So I think one thing that really makes his teeth pop is if we have the edges at the bottom kind of more defined, or not at the bottom, but at the root, I guess. To make it more like teeth. Or gums, I guess. Sometimes we're breaking this tangent here, so we're kind of continuing the tangent of that. So that it feels like they're rooted deeper. And it's so easy to add that texture back on. See, so now we're seeing like the skin texture and we're seeing the, the overall like, the, uh, like the, what is it called? The, the bone texture. So this is where we need to make some of these pieces of skin a little thinner. Like, you know, they're barely holding on to this, to the tapering into the skull. As opposed to being a chunk that's just kind of out since it's been drying it's probably like beef jerky so those are things to kind of consider at least that's kind of what i'm thinking about while i'm doing this i just kind of want to give you guys an idea of like why i'm doing this and what's the deal with that and you know see what i'm thinking Give it a little, got a little more roundness. Uh, multiple platforms, but I think YouTube is the one where it's going to be available afterwards. So, you know, some of this stuff is breaking up, so it's not all staying together. The teeth are all maybe jacked up, like the lips are being all torn up by every time he eats, eats something. So we're kind of chipping away at some of that. Yeah, it's multiple platforms, so feel free to use check it out in whatever your preferred platform is. See what else? What else do we need to do this on this? We could do some poly painting. I think that sounds like a good idea. It's, it's, well, it's for safe. Yeah, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. That's what I'm here for to help you guys in any way I can. So let's see. For most of my time, I do my poly painting at kind of a mid mid gray right so I'll tend to make sure I have solid there we go see it works sometimes sometimes it doesn't want to work I don't know why could be something to do with my layers or something Okay, so now that we have this um, kind of mid-level, so now we can switch over to that, that tool and then go back to our masking. This helps kind of define like the way I'm going to eventually paint it, you know? Twitch? Okay, cool. Yeah, also I started my YouTube channel, so if you guys want to follow me there and Instagram, if you guys want to help support me there, that would be awesome. Uh, let me find my YouTube channel real quick. Since I'm going to be kind of doing my own streams there during the week. It's just starting off, so it's not a, I don't have a lot of stuff on there, but you know. Feel free to follow me there if you guys uh, want. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I know. I, I get this weird cough sometimes in the morning, so I, I you know. I'm not sick or anything. I've been staying indoors with my kids, so I haven't gone anywhere.
So let's see. So we're going to go a little darker. Uh, let's go cavity. Right now that we have all this stuff. Let's see if we can blur our cavity a little bit. Yeah, that helps. So now we're going to invert that. We're going to... We're going to... Uh, let's see. We're going to hit it with a little dark. A little darkness. So one thing you can do is also turn off your mask. Then we're going to uh, go back to the mask, kind of hit it, and kind of uh, go a little lighter. And with this one, we're going to change the pattern to the spray again. We're also, even add this just to add more variation. So then we can do is um, let's see cavity again. Oh, we might gonna do it a lot more. So this we can use a lighter color to kind of spray the highlights. Kind of like if we did like a dry brushing technique on this. Just on some parts, just to give it a little, little more highlights. So if we switch to uh, this guy, you kind of see what's going on. Where are we painting those highlights? And then we'll do a blur on this stuff so that it doesn't feel like super crackly. Yeah, I was thinking of every Wednesday. I'm just not sure if that's a good day. I, you know, I didn't have too many people join last time. It, it was a good amount, but not enough. Not, like, not a, as many as I thought it was going to be. I'm not sure if it's because in the middle of the week or the time. So I'm also experimenting with that. So if you guys have a suggestion of what time works better for you guys, too, that, that would be nice. So I got a little bit of that. Let's, um over to the teeth and do the same thing with that the teeth I guess they're wider so we're gonna keep it a little lighter well I guess we can doesn't matter uh, let's do change the profile this maybe you know what So let's go with the darker part first. So now we can go with the lighter. Why the Asians is interesting, right? It's an interesting issue because sometimes depending where you're coming from, if you're like a modeler or, or concept artist, inspiration comes from everywhere. So sometimes one thing I suggest is looking at, you know, Pinterest or or just look at things that inspire you. Like what you should get inspired, like figure out what inspired those people to do that. 
and from there kind of take it take it all the way to the roots and then figure out how you would get inspired by the originals original source to kind of create your own thing so you're not a copy of those other things that's one way of doing it or just use nature to inspire you as well and get like you know like what do you want to make i want to make a robot well, what kind of robot like a small robot a drone a you know that type of deal and then start doing more research based on that and it's like oh what's the other thing that you combine with that robot you know an insect a person a an animal you know those type of deals and then that would kind of help you narrow it down to like oh maybe he's a sick guy maybe he's a healthy guy maybe it's a robot that's been through war or like in this case right we're kind of inspired by the walking dead a bit but also kind of changing it up to kind of be like a COVID zombie or something like that you know so sometimes you just got to kind of think about things in, in a little different perspective. So here's where we're going to go with our softer airbrush and kind of start putting a little bit of, I guess, uh, what they call modeling, like modeling some darkness into this. So be, I like switching between this so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Just kind of to add like the hints of where I want the paint to be at. Because everything being uniform kind of just doesn't look so good sometimes, you know. And sometimes you just have to be soft about it. Just give it a little highlight. You know, maybe if I think these are should be cavities, like all oh, this stuff is darker. You know, like maybe all this stuff inside the mouth is like rotted, so it should be darker. We'll also do some spotting and that type of stuff, but we're just doing the broad strokes now so that when you look at all this stuff, it looks nice and gross. Usually I take this into Substance Painter, but I've kind of been doing a little bit more of this recently where I just kind of do a quick gray study of it to see what my airbrush job would kind of be like, you know, like if I start also highlighting some of this stuff and start putting a little bit of darker tints in between the teeth, you know. Kind of like a, like how you would paint a little mini, uh, mini uh, board game. Or even how you fake depth to some of this stuff that doesn't have any depth. I think that's, that's the important part. Yeah, let me post some links for you guys in case you guys uh, want to see more of my work or want to follow me or any of that stuff. If if you care, if you guys care to follow or not. Yeah, yeah, because exactly. So, so I'm like this, right? I, I, if I'm gonna cast and mold it, it's gonna be a pain if I have a hole there. So what I could do is uh, cut it out later with the Dremel once I print it, so it'll be thin, or once I cast it, or I could just paint it black and then it's it's fine, you know. Then you won't really see it. So that's kind of what I'm trying to fill in those gaps with with this. Like these these holes, like if I need more breathing breathing for for my mask for my real N95 mask, then I could cut these holes out, you know, and then it'll be fine. I'll get more more air. But I'm also kind of modeling some of this stuff. So if you see see it with this, you kind of see what I'm doing. I'm kind of like just like slight like if I was gonna be airbrushing this slightly, airbrushing like a definition for the teeth to feel like they're popping out more, you know, like each tooth gets a little bit more defined. It just in between the edges, you know. You know, also like between the lips, so like this stuff here. Actually, no, let's put that shader back on. 
on all the little edges, you know, like I'm kind of going here and just paint a little bit of a shadowing, a little bit of a rot color. So that way it just pops a little more naturally, you know. That kind of makes sense. Uh, I don't teach airbrush, but I have been, I have taught one or two people. When, you know, people that, that they were CG artists that never touch airbrush. So I, I've been thinking about it in the last couple of years, like making an airbrush for CG artists, but I'm not sure if there's enough interest for, for me to spend time doing that, you know? But if there is, you guys let me know too, because uh, I am thinking of doing more, more on my YouTube channel. So that could potentially be part of that. Let's see, this is looking, um, let's see, let's bring out the, the head as well. So this is where my beard is at, so let's let's remove my beard real quick. Let's put this in a layer, in case I need to see a layer. Yeah, what do you guys think? What do you guys what do you guys think the way that this thing went? Let's see. Uh... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because I'll show you what it looks like with and without. Um, sometimes it just doesn't look. It's it's hard to see, right? So let's turn off all the color. Sorry, put this back on. So that's kind of what it looks like with no poly paint, right? Like it's it's okay. And also, we can use uh, this new thing, right? That we haven't used. Um, where is it? I haven't been using it, but I should be using it. The preview AO. See, that kind of gives us a lot of this stuff, too. And depending on what kind of system you have, you go up the quality, or you can just kind of tone it down, too. So, this is also pretty cool. So, this could help with, with that. So you guys can see, kind of gives it a little bit of, uh, of the highlights, you know. You can also blur if it's, you know. Let me move this to the side so we can actually see it better. That's one of the cool new features. See, but it's easy also to get carried away with that and, and, and overdo it. So let's try this with a couple different shaders. So I think just a little bit of the quality helps, not not a, I mean a, a little bit of the intensity helps, maybe like up to 10 or 12. You know, so you can see the details. It helps kind of occlusion and you can see like, oh, maybe I need to push some of this in or out. I think it's for ambient occlusion. I don't think it's the same because you can't change the, the grade, the, what is it called, the, the curve on this. So you can play around with these radius controls, but I think it's just screen space type of stuff. It does help to see some of these details, you know, it kind of pops them out a little bit more. Uh, but the paint, I feel like the paint is a little bit nicer. So see like that's the paint. So I know that that's going to be actually black, like between the teeth. And that kind of helps me visualize that. Right. And there, there's uh, this stuff that I painted, you know, so you can see kind of rotted skin. And what that's kind of looking like and not also blur some of that stuff so like if some stuff becomes way too like kind of i want to say uh too too strong that's one thing that i really like about this that i can kind of just hit it with the blur and kind of you know just fade some of those things away if they became too pixelated too sometimes that happens Time to help, like help it blend in better. It doesn't look like a tree texture, you know? So that way some of the sculpture is doing the work and then your enhancements with the with the airbrush are doing that, that type of work too. So I'm always thinking about like what the final output is.
And then if you need to enhance some details, you can always go back and remask and then just add those details back on. But I just want that to kind of help the original detail just pop a little more, if that kind of makes sense. You know, you could have some teeth that are darker or lighter or have like a... Switch back to uh, so it makes it look a little little nicer, I think. You know, play around with the shaders. But it's interesting what this uh, AO is doing. Uh, let's see where is it? The occlusion. But yeah, it's kind of where we ended up at. What do, what do you guys think? Let's see where are we? We have a couple more minutes. Um, let's uh, let's let's rent, let's save this first, and then maybe do a test render in Keyshot. See what that look, looks like. Hey, side effects. How's it going, man? Cross to push my my own head in because my own head is kind of sticking out. Some sections still. All right, so let's take this to key shot. Keyshot is launching, so let's just give it a second. So let's make that environment a lot bigger because Here I like to look at this raw without any poly paint, so we're going to reassign a new, a new material. Because since we're, it's not airbrush, I want to see just kind of when I, when I, the raw casting, what it's going to look like. Uh, yeah, I haven't used the, yeah, the contrast stuff is pretty great. I've been using that for the 3D printing stuff, so I might use it on this if I feel like it's not quite strong enough. But I wanted to at least make the base look decent and then I'll just push it, you know, probably twice, like put it in the layer. <laughs> yeah, somebody forgot to reverse your teeth. Oh man, that's cool, man. Full time uh, Mono X, I heard, is it's really good. So, also here we get a sense of like what it's gonna look like when we. You know in the real world so like what's reading right what's not reading correctly you know are the teeth still too big you know like exactly some of these details need, might need to be just pushed more like the the skin skin details that i had because they're not reading as, as strong as they they probably should be like they're okay here but they're, they kind of fade away in areas right so that's where we can start enhancing Based on some of these renders. See like the bone texture is kind of gone. Like some of this stuff is kind of like soft. Like like I'm having troubles reading it here. Like you can see some of it done here and some of it here, but it's it's like so tiny. So we need to put another level of, of detail on, on there, I think. Hey, what's up man? Saludos, hola. Yeah, like here, like 
See, like this stuff down here is good, but the rest of the stuff kind of disappeared, right? And like what happened to it? It was there. Of course, you also don't want to make everything look like leathery skin, like the same pattern. But this is like starting to become way too soft. Or maybe the top of the nose is fine. So seeing it the way you probably would see it in real life going outside this is probably like a good a good test, you know. See like the teeth are reading correctly and they seem to be okay. And some of the other details that are done here are reading okay. Like I guess primary details, secondary details are reading okay, but not not like the maybe a bit of the secondary tertiary or not. This is where we could start pushing this stuff. So now that we kind of know that, we can go back to ZBrush and like, see how they're reading a lot stronger here. This is also, you know, without, without this. So now we could start painting, we could start turning off the poly paint on both pieces and be like, okay, I see that it's kind of gone there. Like somehow it probably got deleted when I, um, when I blur that mask, I think that's what happened. It also blurred detail. I think that's what, what was happening. Let's see, let me switch over to it. Switch this sub tool. Yep, so that wasn't that sub tool. So that's probably what happened. Yeah, that's that's exactly what happened. Since I was erasing the detail, it accidentally deleted the detail. Yeah, that we had in there. So this is where we have to be careful with the poly painting. And that you need to make sure you turn off, uh, only turn on RGB on and turn off sub and add. But not a big deal, right? We're just going back in here, kind of seeing where, where did I erase? You know, how much more did I erase? And it looks like we're back to where we're at. So same thing with this, right? Just go back a few steps. Maybe go back up to there, you know, about about the same amount of undos. So we can go back to a key shot and unpause this. You can take a look at the, the cheek area or the, see how we're kind of missing all that detail. Um, and then go back here, send that back out. And it'll take a second for it to refresh. See, we'll see it probably update live here. There we go, we got that detail back. So sometimes that happens, you know. Yeah, making a zombie mask, you know, just something different. Why not make a mask? I think we'll probably do something where we do like a mass this week and then the week or the after we'll do another project and then once a month we'll do a mask, you know, since it's still fun and we have big 3D printers now that we can print it all in one piece, so. Yeah, so we got all that detail back, which is nice, so that kind of helps. But now we can also push that detail further, you know, or put detail where we forgot to put detail. I feel like I need to make those teeth even smaller. Just looking, just from the looking at this, but, you know. Let's see. And we can still turn off colorize. It's the same thing as using the, the brush, hitting the little brush here. Let's see what happens if we make those teeth slightly smaller. Forgot that I had that stuff mask. Let's mask it first before we break it completely. Oh, thank you, man. Appreciate it. Just wondering why I look weird.
Just a little bit, you know? Not, not too much. They were just looking a little too big for, I guess, the scale of my overall face. They could probably go just a little smaller. So sometimes you'll see that, you know, you messed up. <laughs> or not messed up, but it could be a little better. So why not improve it? And if it's not, then it's okay. Yeah, that's just complaining because I, you know, we went back a bit. And yeah, they don't like that. We're talking about that thinness on the skin, so this is kind of, I'm just kind of tweaking back that because I, I moved the teeth. Wasn't that much, but it's enough to have to tweak it. So let's try that. Let's see. I feel that that feels much better. Oh, let's bring out key shot again. Let's make it a little smaller. So let's send this over to key shot. It just, they just feel a little too big to exaggerate for my taste, so I just decided to kind of bring them down a little bit. So yeah, if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to me anytime, here or there or wherever, you know. Yeah, that feels much better. They feel much, much more proportion. But I think it would be cool to walk around with this mask on the, on the street, scare people. Probably add some more uh, asymmetry, a little bit more. Push those teeth out a little bit. For some of those wrinkles. I like this red, so I'm always switching over to that red. Yeah, I see we have to tweak a little more of the skin here as we. And that's what it is. This one's still masked too, isn't it? Yeah. But that's fine. Those are little artifacts. Maybe he got stung by a bee or... We also have to add some pores. Even though he has dead skin. Still has some pores and maybe some weird like anomalies, you know? Uh, how do you properly... I, I have a scan of myself, so... Um, I kind of use that as a base. But I'm... I'm uh, you could scan yourself with your phone nowadays, you know. Um, I have multiple scans from different types of scanners, but I just use the simplest one so that it, it kind of just overall fits me, but it could also fit somebody else. And also take account that I have a gold gold tea or a beard, so. Let's try working with this uh, AO, see how that helps. Um, oh, skin, that's right, we're going to add some. Got some pores, maybe some. I used to have some pro pore brushes, but I don't have them at the moment. But maybe that's what he needs. Let's see. Sorry, I went to the wrong one. IRA, what's that? Can you explain? Yeah, this will work out fine. Maybe just a matter of size and depth, maybe. Yeah, this kind of helps fill in some of that. Maybe, maybe back to where we're at. You know, some of those details that we're kind of missing, this kind of helps fill in some of those. So it's a combination of pores and wrinkles. 
And he is dead, so. Yeah, we'll play around with the contrast brush in a minute, too, so you guys can see what, what that does. Oh, I see, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I'm thinking of doing a, probably a, a, um, either a YouTube or a gun road of um, how you kind of scan your head with different methods in case you don't have access to a phone or you don't have access to certain things. That way you could do it in any other, in any way or multiple ways so that you kind of could, could do just, you know, have fun with it and just scan away you don't always have to have um so here's what i was thinking i was thinking of making some some areas that i'm masking now have some pitting right instead of laying one at a time kind of what i'm doing now just one at a time is good for variation but not for the overall thing so here's what i was thinking of doing some Some pitting in some areas. And it could be very large and very small, so you can kind of vary it. So it's not like a specific pattern. Just to give it some more variation on the skin, you know, like it started. Maybe a squirrel star eating it, something like that. You know, because if you just do it in one section and you do it a lot in the same scale, it starts to look kind of funky. But here's where you can kind of um, start using other patterns to kind of. And we use it sometimes kind of this is the rotting stuff we were talking about earlier that we didn't really, we didn't really get to do i'm going maybe a little softer in that maybe like 28 or something and also just get the edges you know don't You can also change it. There's this one, and then there's uh, this one as well. You know, so it's not just kind of cuts. It's uh, kind of bubbly stuff too. For all the rotting, all the rotting places. Oh, thanks, man. It's all good. It's all recorded, so. You know. See, so now we're getting now we're getting more of that rotting flesh. You know, so it's all a matter of buildup of different types of details put together, and then you know. But of course, try to not overdo it. Because sometimes when you overdo it, you could you know starts to look a little. So here we can add a little bit more visual interest. But of course, like I was saying, don't overdo it. So you just kind of maybe put it at a lower passage just to give this more of an organic look, you know. Break it up just a tiny bit more. It's 
See, like on the teeth and that stuff is too much, but we could always turn, turn it down a little bit. Just give it a little more breakup. Like stuff you don't want to do by hand, you know? Also, there's probably some rotting happening here too on the, on the gums or you know, like around the areas where it's been rotting more, just to give it a little more breakup. So it's so it's a matter of like making sure your primary form, secondary forms are good, and then from there you you go. <laughs> Thanks, Carl. But yeah, what do you guys think? This is kind of where we ended up in the middle of uh, a two hours, two hour session. So before we move on, we're going to do another render. Just to compare, you know. compare what we had to what we ended up with so this is kind of what we had right it's looking all right Let's send it to key shot yeah that's definitely reading a lot better there's enough break of enough material definition for the overall thing Creepy, right? <laughs> well, I'm glad you guys dig it. I had fun making this. Uh, well, let's let's do one more thing before I go. I know we have we're probably gonna run over a little bit over, uh, but one thing we can do is put a switch over to our skin. And if some stuff, let's say you do a test print and it doesn't come out as nice as you think it looks here, which sometimes that does happen. You can make a layer. And we can go to deformation, and there's contrast, right? So we put that up to 100. Especially if you have a FDM printer, this helps a lot to make those details and lines disappear. So this maybe is too much, maybe just one time. And what's nice, if you did it in the layer, then you can go ahead and compare. You know, or if there's details that you just want to put on one place and not everywhere else, you can as well paint it away. You know, or if you want, just do like 0.5 of that. Just enough to kind of push push the fleshiness out and depth. So, yeah, guys, this is kind of where we landed. Uh, thanks for joining. I really appreciate you guys uh, hanging out here. Uh, like I said, feel free to follow me and uh, check out some of my other streams or the other work that I do. Uh, let me copy and paste some of those links for you guys in case you guys didn't get them earlier uh, but i really appreciate you guys coming over and checking this stuff out we're glad we were able to finish this from beginning to end in this in this um also if you guys want my interface check out my gum road download it there it's free uh let's see and one more link and we should be good Thanks, guys. Thanks, Jack. But yeah, if you guys have any questions that I can help you with, uh, feel free to reach out to me, and then uh, we can uh, chat some more. There you go. Add some perspective to this. Nice and fleshy, right? Nice and scary. But yeah, thanks, guys. Appreciate you guys uh, joining. I will see you guys uh, next time. Uh, take care and stay safe. See you. Alright, take care guys. See ya. Thanks for joining.